Chapter 1 Living Space Although Hitler's premise was that humans were simply animals, his own very human intuition allowed him to transform his zoological theory into a kind of political worldview. The racial struggle for survival was also a German campaign for dignity, he maintained, and the restraints were not only biological, but British. Hitler understood that Germans were not, in their daily life, beasts who scratched food from the ground. As he developed his thought in his second book, composed in 1928, he made clear that securing a regular food supply was not simply a matter of physical sustenance, but also a requirement for a sense of control. The problem with the British naval blockade during the First World War had not simply been the diseases and death it brought during the conflict and in the months between armistice and final settlement. The blockade had forced middle-class Germans to break the law in order to acquire the food that they needed or felt that they needed, leaving them personally insecure and distrustful of authority. The world political economy of the 1920s and 1930s was, as Hitler understood, structured by British naval power. British advocacy of free trade, he believed, was political cover for British domination of the world. It made sense for the British to parlay the fiction that free exchange meant access to food for everyone because such a belief would discourage others from trying to compete with the British Navy. In fact, only the British could defend their own supply lines in the event of a crisis and could, by the same token, prevent food from reaching others. Thus, the British blockaded their enemies during war, an obvious violation of their own ideology of free trade. This capacity to assure and deny food, Hitler emphasized, was a form of power, Hitler called the absence of food security for everyone except the British the peaceful economic war. Hitler understood that Germany did not feed itself from its own territory in the 1920s and 1930s, but also knew that Germans would not actually have starved if they had tried. Germany could have generated the calories to feed its population from German soil but only by sacrificing some of its industry, exports, and foreign currency. A prosperous Germany required exchange with the British world, but this trade pattern could be supplemented, thought Hitler, by the conquest of a land empire that would even the scales between London and Berlin. Once it had gained the appropriate colonies, Germany could preserve its industrial excellence while shifting its dependence for food from the British-controlled sea lanes to its own imperial hinterland. If Germany controlled enough territory, Germans could have the kinds and the amounts of food that they desired with no cost to German industry. A sufficiently large German empire could become self-sufficient, an autarkic economy. Hitler romanticized the German peasant not as a peaceful tiller of the soil, but as the heroic tamer of distant lands. The British were to be respected as racial kindred and builders of a great empire. The idea was to slip through their network of power without forcing them to respond. Taking land from others would not, or so Hitler imagined, threaten the great maritime empire. Over the long term, he expected peace with Great Britain on the basis of the division of the world. He expected that Germany could become a world power while avoiding an Armageddon with England. This was, for him, a reassuring thought. It was also reassuring that such an alteration of the world order, such a re-globalization, had been achieved before in recent memory. For generations of German imperialists, and for Hitler himself, the exemplary land empire was the United States of America. Hitler saw the species as divided into races, but denied that the Jews were one. <laughs>